We know this is the day that the Lord has made, don't we? Aren't we going to be glad in it? Aren't we going to rejoice in it? I would tell you to stand, but I'm not, unless the Spirit leads you. And we don't have the handle, so you've got to just kind of follow along. You know the words, but you got a mask, so nobody's going to see you miss say the word. And we'll get warmed up on this first Sunday of a brand new year that God has blessed us to see. And there's only one message that we got to keep on going. Now here's how that verse goes. Oh, time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth a move can stand. Feel your hopes on things Everybody ought to hold God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold to God's unchanging hand. Feel your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Sing it again. Everybody ought to
in preparation for the pastor's message this morning. It is found in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. Again, that is Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob shout. For the foremost of the nations make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, the expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will leave them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble because I am Israel's father. Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord. You nations proclaim it in distant coastlands he will scatter Israel, with, will gather them, and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. For the Lord will deliver Jacob and redeem them from the hand of those stronger than they. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord, the grain, the new wine, and the olive oil, the young of the flocks and the herds. They will be like well-watered gardens and they will sorrow no more. Then young women will dance and be glad, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will satisfy the priests with abundance, and my people will be filled with my bounty. The word of God for the people of God, all praise be. To God. Amen and good morning and welcome to the Sunday morning worship experience of the Gilfield Baptist Church. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. And by whatever means of worship mode, you're either in person or online, but you are with the saints of God celebrating what God has done for us. If you'd like to support this ministry with a New Year's Sunday offering, then you can text us at 804-895. I'm sorry, you can text us at 73256 and key in the message GBC Give. If you'd like prayer, we'd certainly love to have prayer with you or to talk more about how you can become a full-on disciple of God this year, then you can call us at 804 895 0213. Are there any first time visitors with us today? First time visitors. Are, are there any first time 2022 20, worshipers in the house today? Y'all don't know the year. Y'all had a party last night and didn't realize. That, that, that's all of us. That's all of us. We thank God for that. And anybody celebrating a January wedding anniversary? Any wedding anniversaries in January? Uh, we, are, we recognize those who are celebrating January birthdays, Eloise, Kevin, Chauncey, Gwendolyn, Reagan, Margaret, Evelyn, Sarah, Faith, Paris, Troy, Danaja, Bessie, Jean, Tony, CJ, and Corrine. Give the Lord a hand of praise. And most especially you, all of you who, are, who entered the world in January. We thank God for the gift of life, and we say happy January celebrations to all of you on this special day. Now may the music and the message minister to our hearts.
previously read in our hearing, Jeremiah chapter 31, beginning at verse number 7. I'm going to highlight those passages of scripture that we're going to deal with. Verse 7 says, proclaim Give praise and say, O oh Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Say remnant. remnant. Then I want to look down at verses uh, number 10. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of one stronger than he. Verse 14, I will satiate the soul of the priest with abundance 
and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Tag this text, a recipe for a new year. And now, God, may the words of our mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. This passage of scripture is a prophetic word to people who had been held in captivity and now they're on the brink of being liberated. They're on the brink of being released from their captivity. Indeed, those who started out uh, are not the ones who are returning. Uh, many who started are not going to be the ones who go back in. Those who were, went into captivity are not all of the ones who are going to come out of captivity. They're those, and it isn't necessarily because they're those who were better than others. That one didn't pray as hard as another. That one looked or had more going on than the other. But there's always a remnant to testify as to what it, we experienced on the front end and what we experienced uh, coming out. And then those who have experienced what we have experienced going in uh, are not the same ones who are going to tell the story after we get through. That's not just true in a pandemic, but it is true in any situation in life. Whenever difficulties arise, whenever hardships arise, then you will discover uh, that those who went in with you aren't all going to come out with you. Uh, but all you have to do is keep your heart and mind focused on the God who is able to deliver. Uh, you don't know whether you're going to be a part of the remnant or you're going to be a part of the slaughtered in the initial phase. But if you keep your hand in the hand of the Lord, a lot of people get frantic and worried and upset about things that are happening. And I want to suggest to us that there's some things we do not know. There's some things that if we know, we can't do anything about it. And because we know what needs to be done doesn't mean we're able to do anything about it. But guess what you can do? You can tell the Lord, my faith is firmly in you. I will not trust in chariots. That means the material wealth. I will not trust in the strength, my connections, my friends. I will trust in you to see me through this difficult time. See, that's what you got to do. You got to say, Lord, I, I, I may have been shucking and jiving before. I mean, I was going to church and I, they said turn to the Bible, but but I, I you know, uh, so I don't quite know what it says. That's all right. I'm going to tell you what you need to say now. You need to say to the Lord, I, I, I want to put everything into your hands. I'm going to trust you. Yeah. Now, here the people here in verse 8 of Jeremiah 31, it says, are in the north country. And you know what's in the north country. The sun does not shine so much in the north country. It's cold in the north country. There's darkness that lingers a little longer in the north country. See, in the southern hemisphere, you got heat and sunlight, but in the northernmost part, you got darkness most parts of the year. You got cold temperatures, and this suggests that there are some people who belong to God, but they've been sitting in darkness. And there are some who have come through one year and have now emerged into another year just as dark and confused as you've ever been. Here, there, you've got to recognize your own darkness, don't? It isn't time to point fingers in late blame and say, Lord, I'm in darkness and I need your light to guide me through. I need your light to keep me warm. I need your light so that I can see the silhouette of your hand moving in this place. I need your light in order to guide me so that I don't stumble. I need your light so that I can see the glimpse and glimpse your glory and understand that no matter what happens today, tomorrow, next week, ultimately you will be praised. And God, if you want to seek some people who will be 
uh, who will try out to be a part of the remnant, then I want to try out now. See, that's how you try out. You try out because you start counting the goodness of the Lord. You try out by saying and declaring, God, you've been good to me. Well, let me see. You, you got me some new shoes and you got me a couple of new outfits and you got my bills paid up and you got my mortgage paid up. I, you guided me to retirement and they gave me a big bonus and I, I took the job that ultimately it was you who led me to. I wasn't thinking about that job 30 some years ago go, but then you guided me to that place, and Lord, I want to just practice to be a part of the remnant. I don't know who you're going to pick. I'm not going, I don't know who's going to be uh, around when all this clears up, but I guarantee you God wants a remnant that's going to praise him. Do you think God wants a remnant that's just going to look and get quiet and act like you ain't been through nothing? No, God wants a remnant who will emerge from the situation, who knows how to praise his name, who doesn't mind giving him the credit, who doesn't mind giving him the glory, who doesn't mind appearing to be uncouth or, you know, not too cute in order to give the Lord some praise to declare, God, I, 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 you've only held my hand. You've only guided my footsteps. You kept me when I cried. I may not have let a whole lot of y'all see me cry, but Lord, you were there when I cried, and I want to just try out for the remnant uh, that, that's going to emerge, that's going to sing your praise. The remnant is going to declare his goodness, and if you want to uh, see how things are going to end up, you can start praising him right now for all that he's brought you through. He says, he says there, and there are going to be those in that crowd, the blind, the lame, uh, the woman with child, who labors with child together, and a great throng shall what? Return there. All of us want to get back to there. Over the last nearly two years, we've wanted to get back to there. And I'm not so sure that whenever, even if we get back there, that there is going to look exactly like it was when we left it. You see, it's been a while, and when you have left something unattended, when you have left something in isolation, when you return to it, it's strange. You would think that it would have just stayed in its perpetual state of preservation, but when you remove life from a situation, it's amazing how death creeps in. It, it's amazing, it's amazing. You would think that if nobody has been in the building, that the building would be just like we left it and we can just go right on back. But then you discover that because nobody has used it, then there's some things that go bad. Yeah, I mean, it would, it would seem, it would stand to reason. If you don't go into that room, then dust won't go into that room. But you can lock it, seal it, and when you come back, there's dust and cobwebs. How did that happen? It, it happens because isolation will do that. And so even though you return, you have to have a different mindset than before you left. If the remnant's job is to report back praise to God through the condition, then the return is a return to the scene, but it's not a return to the old normal. It's a return to the future. A whole lot of us are praying, Lord, Lord, please let us go back to normal. I want you to add into that prayer that you've been praying. And if, Lord, if you don't return us back to normal, then prepare us for the to return to your future. And see, the things that we used to do, we won't be able to do no more because our running buddies ain't all there. Uh, our running buddies aren't interested. We're not going to return to what we used to do because we've developed a habit, not just over 30 days, but over some 20 plus months of, of changing things and being disconnected and, you know, being kind of suspicious. That's why I heard some folk, you know, coughing. And so when you see on camera that the pastor was looking around, making sure they got their mask on right, because if they're coughing, you know, that, you know, we, we're not going to let coughs go. We, we used to cough all day in church and not think anything of it and rattle out of men. Now you're coughing. Everybody's looking. I hope that ain't what I think it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And let me put this plug in. That's why I talk to your doctor and get you a, a, a vaccination or get you a booster and still keep your mask on and keep your hands clean and out of your face and out of your mouth and stay out of crowds. Don't infect 
the folk you love and don't infect the folk you don't know. I don't want you to infect me and I certainly don't want to infect you. That's a plug there because we gotta, somebody's got to say that because when we return back to normal, we're going to be a little bit more cautious. We're going to observe something. Maybe, maybe this is what we needed to observe anyway. Boundaries. See, we, got a pro we had a problem with boundaries. We were just all in each other's space. You know, you, I mean, when you think about it, you standing in line at the bank somewhere and somebody is right on you. They don't know you. They ain't got no engagement ring or proposal ring to you, but they're standing right up on you. I mean, you didn't know how to say it then, but now you can just kind of look at them and, and point to the floor. They got those little things that say, stand here. Thank God for those little magnets that say, stand here, sit here. Uh, you got. I, I wish in the body of Christ we would have some little markers that would say, stay in your lane. Observe some boundaries. I mean, when we go back, we ain't gonna go back and stretch out all over the place. We didn't like it then. We just didn't know how to say it or how to address it. But now that we understand some things, when we return, they're gonna be a little different. But guess what? We have been practicing how to praise him. So when we return, what we're gonna do is return in praise. We're gonna return giving thanks. We're gonna return giving God the credit. We're gonna return knowing how it means to leave it all in his hand. I ain't trying to figure it out. I ain't trying to strategize it. I'm going to leave it in his hands. I'm going to let the Lord work it out and I'm going to be doing what he has given me 24 months to do. I'm going to be practicing how to praise him. I'm going to be practicing how to tell him thank you. I'm going to be practicing how to express gratitude to him because he has been good to me. He has blessed me. When I cried, he was there consoling me. When I was in distress, he gave me comfort and I've been learning how to practice him. Oh, I know that those, those who said, I ain't never had a bad day in my life. Well, I'm sure over the last 20-some months you've had some bad days, but don't let those bad days stop you. You can still praise him when you return, because that's what he wants you to do. Oh, but then he says, I'm going to do something else for you. He says, I'm going to, verse 11, the Lord has redeemed and ransomed. That's an interesting combination. Redeem and ransom. I'm going to take you back from what held you down. What used to control you. What had a grip on you that you could not free yourself. I'm going to free you. And then two words, I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to ransom you. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to ransom you. The word of redemption is for the impatient child of God. You had your plan all set up. You had everything like you had it. Yeah, the redeem. And something happened and you lost your schedule. You, you lost your plan. And so since your plans have been shelved and you don't know when those plans are ever going to come back to the schedule that you had set, there is a word for you. Yeah, and then he says, I'll ransom. I mean, you've been held down, you've been shackled and bound, chained, handcuffed, gripped, you've been isolated in the basement's basement, you've been locked with a deadbolt, uh, a heavy bar, you know, a whole a chain link, you've been locked in, you have been, in essence, kidnapped, and don't know where you are, don't know how you're going to make it, don't know what to do. I'm going to ransom you. You can't even talk your way out of what you're in. You don't have enough resources. You don't know enough people together whose resources could get you free. He says, I will ransom you. Uh, when you're down to nothing, I'll ransom you. When you had a schedule that you wanted me to honor, that you were trying to do, I'll redeem you. Well, Pastor, what is, what is that? What is that? Well, he says, now, the clock stopped on your schedule. But when I redeem you, 
I'll start the clock and I'll have you exactly where I wanted you to be even before the situation happened. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's what the saints of old used to say. And they had a great way of expressing it, even if their subject and verb didn't agree. No, you can't hurry God. Sometimes you just have to wait. See, that's the problem with us. We don't want to wait. We want it now. And, and really, the younger we are, we don't even know nothing about waiting. And the older we are, well, we used to know how to wait. But now we've gotten so used to the culture and the times that we just like everybody else. We want it right now, instantly, automatic, right here, right now. No delaying, no waiting. If we got to wait, something is wrong. What's wrong? No. You know, you got to trust God and give yourself time no matter how long you think it takes God to move in your life, God is a God that you can't hurry. But guess what? God will be there. Don't you worry. God may not come when you want God. But let me tell you what. When God shows up, God shows up not just on time, but in time. And sometimes I heard somebody say, he'll show up when there seems to be no time. I'll redeem you when you think the clock has run out. I'll give you what the calendar says you should have had already. I'll bring to you what the clock has said. All right? Now you're running 60 minutes late. I bet that it doesn't make it enough. Never mind, because what God has for us, God is going to give it in God's own time. And when we receive it, we will understand that God was not late at all. And I'm so glad God moved when God did. Let me tell you, so that you will learn from this moment to let God have God's way in your life. All you got to do is just thank him and praise him and be faithful to him. Says I'll ransom you. Yeah, that's important too. I, I'll redeem you. I will. I'll, I'll make you a contender again. I'll redeem you, but I'll ransom you because you thought that what you had made you a target. But it's not what you have; it is who's in you. That's important. And you're made a target because. They recognize in you that there is the divine, the creator of the universe in you. And so they want to snuff out your allegiance to the Lord. And so the recipe for the year is not to cave into the culture. Your recipe is to say, now, I'm a target. But guess what? If you mess with me, then you got to deal with the one who sent me. If you, deal, if you mess with me, then you got to deal with the one who's working through me, who's given me my assignment because when all else fails he knows how to set me free he knows how to rescue me he will ransom me and baby you don't want to be in possession of stuff that belongs to him because of your nefarious actions and deeds because if you got what belongs to him he's going to come back with a vengeance baby and take it all back I would not bother anything that belongs to God because he will ransom it that means he's going to take care of you that means he's going to deliver you that means he's going to be with you in the ER. He's going to be with you at the bank. He's going to be with you at the credit union. He's going to be with you at the lawyers. He's going to be with you in court. He's going to be with you when the lights are out and you're all by yourself. He will come and see about you. He knows how to ransom you. Ah, oh, and then there's something else. You notice, you notice how the Lord works in patterns. The remnant is going to come out rejoicing. Now they're going to be crying and rejoicing at the same time. They're going to be redeemed and ransomed. And they're going to be liberated. They're going to be both under the auspices of the shepherd and lion. And so the question is, out of all we've been through, child of God, is it perhaps that we try to be so theological, spiritually holy, and just sanctified? And we want to sound, you know, so churchy. The devil. Ah, well, you, you, you can give the devil more credit if you want to. 
But it seems as though the children of God here have been both bound and freed by the same key. And the key in the same hand that they're crying and rejoicing. But, 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 but the oppressor held me down. No, your disobedience to God gave the oppressor an advantage over you. See, don't think that because God blesses you that somehow you have an advantage. You have an advantage only because you have the Holy Spirit in your life. Because there are some other folk who are bigger and badder than you are. See, that's why Jesus tells us to be as harmless as doves and to be wise. And he doesn't tell you to go fighting, talking big and doing all this stuff that you think you're good enough to do big and bad. And I dare to Because you will eventually, child of God, run up on somebody who showed enough. Show enough ready for you. They got say, they got some see they we used to have a we used to have a, a expression, don't write a check. And a whole lot of us have forgotten that because God is at work in our lives, we think we write the checks. You can't cash it, you'll bounce a check every time, you ain't got enough resources, but let me tell you, and so when you think it's all about what you want to do and how much power you have, God will let you know that there's some folk who don't even acknowledge me, they are stronger than you, but guess what, if you are mine and they deal with you in harshly, harshly, then I'll deal with them, but I'll let you go off in their care just to make you understand that I am God. I, it, it, some people are hard to learn, so they got to go when they think they're big and bad enough to go. And every now and then, God will let you go when you think you're big and bad enough to go by yourself, on your own. You ain't got to do what you've been told to do in church. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Because after you've been in that situation for a while, you'll discover, Lord, I need you to come save me. I need you to ransom me. I'll rejoice when I get to where we're going. If you let me return, I'll praise your name. If you let me return and ransom me and redeem me, and I'll guarantee that when the clock starts back, I'll do what you want me to do what I should have done then I'll do it now and guess what he says he says you're going to rejoice yeah, yeah. Did, did you see that there you're going to rejoice while you're in it because you want to be in the remnant chorus that rejoices after we return you, you're going to want you're going to re rejoice because we've, re we, we've been returned but we're different now we've been redeemed we, we, we return a little different. We have been ransomed. See, you understand now that you're no longer on your time schedule, but you're on God's time schedule. Your, your job is not to predict the weather. Your job is not to predict who's in office. Your job is not to decide whether they put the street signs. Your job is not to decide whether they put carpet or tile down in the sanctuary. Your job is simply to praise the Lord. Your job is to understand that what God has given you, God wants to get the glory out of it, and God wants you to see that every single day that I allow you to wake up, if you got a pulse and you got a praise, and if you got a pulse and a praise, look around and see what God has given you to praise. I got family members, that's a reason to praise. I got joy, that's a reason to praise. I got friends, that's a reason to praise. God has kept me, that's a reason to praise. Now, I know all of us have been wondering about that superstar, that celebrity that we fall in love with on television, who was just less than three weeks from turning 100 years old, and we'd say, well, how unfair that is. Let me tell you, if God would take you to the brink of things, and, and, and see, that's on our time schedule, but how, what if God wants to give you something better than what you were planning to do yourself? I know you were planning for a big party. I know you were planning for some things to work out. You were planning for a vacation. You were planning to do this or that, but let me tell you, if you belong to God, and if you decide that you're going to rejoice in God's goodness, that whatever God has for you, come on, help me out, whatever God has for you, then you will be able to celebrate. You're not going to miss out on any celebration because if you're on, on number 99 and the Lord says, we're going to cut it off and I'll bring you up and show you a real party. See, all we can do is get you to the maybe the Ritz Carlton or the country club or this place or the other place, but when to be in the presence of the Lord and until then, I'm going to practice what it's like to be in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to shout in the house of the Lord because when I come to the house he has prepared, I don't want to be fumbling over my lines. I want to praise the Lord while I have a chance down here. I'll praise him because he kept me through something.
something, I praise him because I watch him work in somebody's life. I praise him because I know that he keeps my soul. I praise him because when the enemy tries to take me down, it might, the enemy has a grip on me that I cannot break out, but God has a way of freeing me. God has a way of releasing me. If your mind is blocked, he can open up your mind. If friends are not true to you, he'll move them out of the way. If your resources are not dependable and reliable, he will be the collateral that I need. He'll be the collateral that I need to get me out of my bondage. Back to the place where I'll praise him. No, things are gonna look different this year. Things are gonna be different this year. I'm different. You've been through something, you ought to be different. But guess what I'm gonna double down on? I'm gonna double down on rejoicing in his goodness. I'm gonna be aware of his goodness to me. And every chance I get, I'm gonna praise him. Child, did you hear what they did at the church? No, I'm gonna praise the Lord. Did you know what so and so did? No, that, don't, don't bring me that. I'm going to praise the Lord because he's been too good to me. He's guided. He brought me over too much. Tired did you hear what they're asking for now? Guess what? The Lord gave it to me. I'm the first in line. That's what's going to be different. If you want a recipe for this year and any year, learn how to rejoice in him. He'll ransom you. He'll redeem you. He'll let you return as a part of the remnant. And your one job, one job, is to rejoice in him. Gracious God, help us to rejoice in you. Help us to rejoice in you. Help us not to count what we've lost, not to count what used to be, not to esteem so much what used to be, but help us, oh God, to rejoice that you've been with us every step of the way. God, in this place we commit now, on this first Sunday of a brand new year, for whatever time we have left to recalibrate our agenda to what you want us to do. We'll rejoice because you'll guide us through. We'll rejoice because you'll do the fighting for us. We'll rejoice and be glad in this day that you've given to us. Thank you, God for redemption. Thank you, God, for ransoming us. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And maybe there's somebody who's here or somebody watching online. If you're watching online, just text in the chat box. I want to learn how to rejoice. Call us at 804-895-0213. If you're in this place, you don't have to lift your hand. You don't have to move anywhere. Just yet. But make it a real commitment to be serious about rejoicing in Him. Which means you got to research it every day. And if there's somebody who's here who's never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, he's ransomed you, he's redeemed you, all you have to do is accept him. Meet me on this front pew, wherever you are. Lord, whatever you're doing, in this season, I want to be your partner. Don't do it without me.
beloved, as we come to a close, we pray that we have been a blessing to you. You can support this ministry with an offering of whatever amount. Text us at 73256. Key in the message, GBC Give. If you'd like prayer, further instruction in spiritual things, then call us at 804-895-0213. Until next time, go in peace.